Okay, we're going to add something to our little mileage calculator here. Uh, let's pretend this is for a business, and the business reimburses employees for the mileage that they have. If they're driving their personal vehicle the, for business, they'll give them money to help pay for the wear and tear and the gas they spend on their car. So we're going to add a button to calculate that for our employees. Put a button on here. I'm going to change it. Two, three. First. Reimbursement have an E in it. Yes, it actually does. Um, not quite long enough to get the. And then let's put a label on here. Oh, I didn't change the name of my button. Button, reimburse, okay, and a label to display the results, and I'm going to turn off auto size, I don't know why the default for that is not true, but it's, I'll turn on a border. it up with my button better and we'll get rid of its text we'll call this label reimbursement Accidentally put two of them on there, apparently. Okay, so what's going to happen with our reimbursement? Okay, when somebody comes in, we're going to calculate their reimbursement by getting their miles that they drove. So that's that exact line, right? But we know it's a parse, so that could fail. So we're going to have to use a try catch block. Um, I'm going to put try. Catch. Excuse me. And I like to put them. New coders tend to do better when you put things on separate lines like that. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to get, well, we're going to do this. So I'm not even going to take the time to type it. We're going to get their mileage out. And then we're going to take the miles. Uh, we're going to calculate the reimbursement is equal to the miles times right now. I think the government rate is what, which is what a lot of businesses use, is fifty-six cents a mile. Great, right? And then what are we going to do down here? If the parse fails, we're going to do that message box. Same message box we used before. Invalid data was entered. Very unspecific. They don't know where they entered the invalid data, but we'll get to that later. Okay. So since we're doing a parse, we need to use a try catch block. All right. But anytime you see a hard coded number in your uh, code, you should start, this should set off little alarm bells for you. You should start wondering, uh, what does that 56 mean? People don't know what that is. If, if it's a long block of code, why is it 0.56? What does that signify? What does it stand for? You don't know. So you shouldn't really use literal values. You should use variables, okay? But this isn't really a variable. It's always gonna be 0.56. So we're gonna, declare a constant, a named constant to use. So up here, we're going to use the keyword C-O-N-S-T, short for constant. It's going to be a double because 0.56, we need decimal places, right? And when we name a constant, the convention is 
that we use all capital letters. Okay, so we'll call it mileage rate. Mileage, and then if we have more than one word, we separate it with an underscore. Okay, now, and then we'll assign it 0.56. Okay, so now we have this name, it's called a named constant. Once it's set, once we set it to 56, we can't change it in our code later. So if I tried to, if I tried to do this, mileage rate equals 25 cents, okay? It won't let me do it. I can't assign something to a constant because it's already set. The minute I say it's constant, we can't change it again, okay? But now that I have that, down here I can put mileage rate. Okay. And this makes a whole lot more sense to somebody who's reading our code. Oh, we're taking the mileage and multiplying it by the mileage rate. Okay. A lot easier to read. We instantly understand what's, what's happening in here. Okay. And if this was a, a long method, our constant would be at the top where we can find it and easily change it. You know, if we have to update it every year, the IRS updates what this rate is, right? So once a year, maybe we come in and update this mileage rate. That way people don't have to know the mileage rate. Uh, we'll just update it once a year. It's easy to find. And what if I use mileage rate 15 places in my code? Okay. I would have to, if I use 0.56 everywhere, then I would have to go everywhere I had a 0.56 and change it. Hoping it's the same 0.56 that mileage rate was. Now, if we use mileage rate in more than one place, we can change it one spot. One spot close to the top of our code. So it's a nice thing to do. What if we wanted to use, when we calculate our mileage, we also wanted to, oh, I didn't finish my code, did I? Um, we didn't, I, I got so excited to talk about constants that I forgot to update the results. And the results was a label, uh, label reimbursement dot text equals our reimbursement. Um, we'll use dot two string. And since that's money, I'll put a C format code in there. Remember C stands for currency. That automatically put the dollar sign and the decimal point to two places. Let's go and run this and make sure we did it right. I'll use my 320. Calculate miles per gallon still works. Reimbursement, $168. Okay, so we reimburse that employee $168 um, for driving for our business. All right. I have to push two buttons here. If I'm not really interested in, what, well, let's make it one button. Calculate miles per gallon. When somebody clicks that, I wanna calculate the miles per gallon, but let's also tell them what their reimbursement rate is at the same time. So basically, I need to calculate the reimbursement up here when I do the miles per gallon. Right? I have a problem though. So I put the code here to calculate the reimbursement, the mileage times the mile, the miles, because we already got the miles up here, times the mileage rate. But remember mileage rate, we declared it down here. It's part of the reimbursement button click. Okay. Now we could copy that up here and put it inside this method, that would work. But if you remember, I said one of the benefits to using this is that now we only have one place to change it. I just got, I just got rid of that, right? So a better thing to do is not to put it inside a method at all. 
what we will do, take it out of both of them, oops, and we'll come up here at the top of our class. This, this is our constructor here. So at the very top of our class, when it opens up, we will put the constant double mileage rate. Okay. Since it's not inside any method, it was declared inside this block. This is the block for our class, right? That means we can use this constant anywhere in our class. So if we go down here now and look, mileage rate doesn't have a red line here, even though it's not declared in this method. And it also doesn't have an underline, a red mark here, because it's available to all of our methods to use. Okay, So it technically has become a field. It's a constant field, but anytime you want to use a variable or a constant in all your methods, you want it available to more than one method, you make it a field by putting it inside the class, but not inside any particular method. And we always put them at the top, okay? So now, if we wanna adjust our mileage rate, we have one spot to do it. Mileage rate is available to all of our methods. We've used it in our calculate mileage button, and we've also used it in our reimbursement. Let's go in and make sure it works. 300 gallons, 20, calculate miles per gallon, and look, it did both. It did both for us. All right, so fields are variables that are declared outside, variables or constants declared outside of methods.